<clears throat> so I don't know that I'm going to do any more videos on impeachment after this. However, there's one more thing that I want to talk about here before we move on. I think that all of the outside cases related to Donald Trump's criminality are still really important, and I will be following those. Um, but I want to talk about one thing that I found interesting and infuriating. Um, that is the Republican who definitely concluded that Donald Trump was guilty of the crime that he was accused of, but yet did not vote to convict. Now, when it comes to the Republicans who voted to convict Donald Trump, there were seven, and that includes Burr, Cassidy, Susan Collins, Lisa Murkowski, Mitt Romney, Ben Sass, and Pat Toomey. And some, such as Burr, have been censured by their home state's legislature for voting to convict Donald Trump. They're basically being denounced officially by their state's Republican Party. That is absolutely, um, that's crazy to me. Um, nonetheless, uh, the individual who said Trump was guilty but didn't vote to convict is Mitch McConnell. So after he voted to not convict, he said this. There's no question, none, that President Trump is practically and morally responsible for provoking the events of the day. No question about it. The people who stormed this building believed they were acting on the wishes and instructions of their president. So there's no question about it. He's guilty, yet you voted to acquit. Do we see the problem? This is a pretty obvious contradiction. And Mitch McConnell is trying to play this off as if it's not a contradiction, when in actuality, it is. He's trying to uh, paint this as a principled constitutional move. It's not based on his own opinion. Sure, the facts do conclude that Trump, he's guilty, right? He incited that insurrection on January 6th. His actions were morally reprehensible. However, my guiding star is the Constitution, and, and so I just have to adhere to the Constitution, because we all know that Mitch McConnell definitely cares about protecting the Constitution. <laughs> <clears throat> but in an op-ed for the Wall Street Journal, he tried to make a sort of pseudo-defense of himself and tried to reframe the situation, but Brooke Seipel of The Hill Explains, Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell in a Wall Street Journal op-ed Monday, defended the Senate's decision to acquit former President Trump, but clarified that it vindicated the Constitution, not Trump. That's horseshit. In his op-ed, McConnell echoed sentiments he shared after the Senate acquittal on Saturday when he said Trump is morally responsible for the Capitol insurrection on January 6th and that he was outraged by Trump's actions. But McConnell went on in the piece to argue that convicting Trump was not protected by the Constitution because he is a former official. McConnell added, however, that he respects the decision of the six Republicans who voted to convict and their interpretation of the Constitution. And I think that's a misprint because there were seven, so I don't know if McConnell said that or, or the author here. Nonetheless, uh, they go on, I respect senators who reach the opposite answer. What deserve no respect are claims that constitutional concerns are trivialities that courageous senators would have ignored, he wrote. McConnell suggested on Saturday that Trump could face criminal prosecution for his actions outside the Senate. President Trump is still liable for everything he did while he was in office as an ordinary citizen unless the statute of limitations has run. Didn't get away with anything yet, McConnell said after the vote. Imagine if Mitch McConnell were correct. He's not, but imagine if he were correct that somebody who is a former president is no longer legally culpable if they're a former official. All you have to do is serve your full term, and then once you leave, anything you've done is, um, it's over. Can't be prosecuted. So what this sets up is a precedent that allows uh, presidents to do whatever they want. On your last day in office, you can murder someone, one of your colleagues perhaps, you can bomb a random country just for the hell of it, uh, you could do anything you want to because that next day, as soon as uh, the clock strikes noon and you hand over the nuclear launch codes and your su successor sworn in, that's it. You, you can get away with anything. Like, is that the type of world that we want to live in? Uh, it, that's not what the Constitution says, and we'll get to the arguments that uh, legal scholars have made, but if the Constitution did in fact say that, that would be a flawed document. But thankfully, Mitch McConnell is lying here, and the Constitution does not say that. 
uh, anyone who believes that, uh, they are in the minority in terms of opinions on the validity of this impeachment trial. So the verdict writes, impeaching a former president is plainly constitutional. I think this is pretty obvious. And when it comes to the argument that the lawsuit is legally frivolous because Trump was just exercising his First Amendment right, well, of course, inciting an insurrection is not protected speech. And the New York Times published an article where 144 constitutional lawyers say that that defense isn't going to cut it. Now, Market Watch talks about how Mitt Romney cited one of numerous constitutional law professors who say, of course, it is constitutional to impeach a former president. I mean, do we want to live in a society where a president can commit war crimes, where a president can break the law, brazenly so, and get away with it? I mean, basically... We already live in that society, right? <laughs> let's, let's be clear about that. Because George W. Bush hasn't seen a day in prison or a Dick Cheney for war crimes. Neither has Obama, neither will Trump, right? But we at least need to have some sort of mechanism, even if it fails, to hold former presidents accountable for their actions. But Mitch McConnell, like, he's not driven by a concern for the Constitution or driven by principle like this is an opportunist he is driven by self-aggrandizement he is motivated he is motivated by what is politically expedient so everything that he's saying here is horseshit and he's trying to pass this off as like him not contradicting himself when he's quite literally doing just that the senate voted to move forward with the impeachment trial citing that it was constitutionally permissible so your job at that point mitch mcconnell was not to determine whether or not it was constitutionally permissible because you already made that decision as a unit as the u.s senate your job was to determine whether or not trump was guilty of the crimes he was accused of and you did conclude that he was guilty so then you vote guilty you vote to convict and this wouldn't have mattered because even if Mitch McConnell did vote to convict, that wouldn't be enough. That wouldn't be enough. It's just like, I don't like the bullshit arguments. I don't like the attempt to lie and, you know, mislead people into believing that you, you were doing this out of concern for the Constitution. Like, this is the same individual who blocked President Obama from fulfilling his constitutional obligation to appoint federal justices or federal judges and a Supreme Court justice. This is the same individual who passed a law when he was Senate Majority Leader that prohibits Americans from participating in BDS. That is a direct violation of the First Amendment. So spare me, Mitch McConnell. You don't give a damn about the Constitution. Stop pretending like you do. But for Mitch McConnell, like, it's almost impressive, like, how little he cares about public opinion. Like, he can be the biggest hypocrite openly so, wear it like a badge of honor, wear it on his sleeve, and, like, we just kind of give him a pass because it's, it's Mitch McConnell and we expect that. But no, this is, like, ridiculous. Like, you're saying, literally, that the president, without question, is guilty, but we we can't convict him because he's a former president? Like, what an idiotic argument to make. Who buys this? So presidents can get away with anything? They just have to leave office? That's it? It just is, it is shocking, like the level of disingenuity here that we're seeing. And this is par for the course for Mitch McConnell, but we shouldn't just like give him a pass because it's Mitch McConnell and this is what we've come to expect. This is still completely inexcusable and he needs to be called out for this. But I mean, it doesn't matter if he is called out for this because there really is no amount of public pressure that will get him to buckle. Like this is a ghoul. He absolutely does not care about the country. He just cares about whatever is politically expedient. And in this instance, you know, um, voting to acquit Donald Trump is what was the most politically expedient. Even if he did not believe that Trump was guilty, um, he would have voted to convict Donald Trump if that was the most politically expedient thing. Now, I, I would argue that if I am an establishment Republican, sure, convicting Donald Trump is important because he kind of is bad for the party. But nonetheless, you know, Mitch McConnell, he has his reasons for why, you know, he, he did this. It's not based on the constitutionality of this proceeding. It is based on what he believes is going to be the best thing for him and his donors and the Republican Party at large. That's what this is about. 
and perhaps he's afraid of Trump's base. I don't know what the reasoning is, but what I do know is that the reasoning that he's citing here is completely bogus, and anyone with a brain who's followed Mitch McConnell can see that that's the case. Beta male.